let's look at the agenda for this particular video. We are going to look at what is RAG, what is the RAG architecture look like, what are the different types of RAG architectures which we can come across, and I'll explain these architectures with a case study examples of a food delivery app by using an AI assistant, and also I will leverage a document search for a simple RAG use case. We will also discuss the pros and cons of the RAG architecture, and finally, I'll end up with a trivia question which you can answer and we can interact in the comment section below. So what is RAG? In a typical AI use case, let's consider an example where we have a chat interface where a user is interacting with an LLM or a Gen AI model. Maybe we used an existing model or we trained a new model and we have used it. We are going to interact with this particular model using a natural language. We use prompts to make it better. And there are prompt engineers who are making the LLM which is served for this chat client better by giving specific prompts and training these LLMs on specific prompts. However, there are some cases where you want to get dynamic information. For example, I asked this particular LLM, what is the temperature right now? Now, when you train an LLM, you train with a predefined data set. Now, this LLM may not be able to answer this dynamic information because temperatures are changing every now and then. And how will the LLM know where to take the data from or where to source the data from. So the LLMs respond with the sorry, I don't have data. Now these pre-trained LLMs don't have the information about these dynamic behavior or the dynamic changes with respect to specific data. Now in this case, we need a way to source data from an external entity. This is where RAG comes into picture. So RAG is an architecture using which you can have external data sources leveraged by the LLM. These are also called as grounded generation. And if you hear about the term grounded generation, these are basically the RAG architecture. Let's see how to get the LLM talk to these external data sources. It's not a straightforward approach, but let's see how we can do that. To understand the RAG architecture, we know that we will be giving an input to the Gen AI model. There is a knowledge base which we need to get data from. In this case, let's say, for example, we need to get some temperature information. So we are going to get a source of truth from uh, external weather application. We need to convert the data into smaller chunks so that we can convert this into a machine understandable language, for example, vectors or embeddings. So we need to create some embeddings. Embeddings are nothing but vectors. We can convert these data, filter these data, and then push them into a database which can host these vector indexes. So vector indexes are the language which the LLMs talk in. So these are machine understandable languages. We saw tokenizers um, in the previous video in prompt engineering. So these are the same vectors which we create out of the tokens from a bird. Once our temperature or the data source gets converted into a vector embedding, we need to also have prompts created by the prompt engineer so that these data can be uniquely identified and linked them with the existing prompts or maybe like prompts which are relevant to that particular data. So prompt engineers play a key role in having these prompts structured in a way so that these are converted into embeddings or vectors which can be relevant. Now, using the context and the most relevant text, we can identify what the user wants by linking the data from the vector indexes and also what the LLM requires. Finally, the LLM converts that data if it found that particular data and then sends it back to the caller. At a high level, this is the architecture, but then let me go deeper into individual components of the RAG architecture. When we convert the knowledge base or the source of truth into embeddings, we will have a lot of data preparation to be done. These raw data sources or the messages needs to be converted by extracting meaningful information from these data sources and we need to chunk them into smaller blocks so that we can convert them into vectors. So in the previous videos we saw about tokenization. So this is somewhat similar. So we convert the document or the knowledge base, chunk them into smaller objects and we feed that into a embedding conversion logic where we again split these chunks into smaller vectors. We store them in the vector index and also we create linkages between the data and the vectors which we created. So for example, we created some source data. With the source data, we link the vector index, whatever got created, so that we can decode that easily. So generating embeddings is basically converting your source data into vectors, which the LLMs can understand. So the part where the knowledge base is fed 
and converted into text using vectors that is called as content generation so essentially we create a content for the llm the process in which we retrieve this information using meaningful context is the retrieval part so rag is basically a combination of content generation and retrieval and that's why it is retrieval augmented generation so based on what you want to retrieve from the vector indexes or from the llm the data gets pulled in from the knowledge base or the source of truth and gets fed into the llm by vectors by converting them as embeddings or vectors that can be understood by the llm and can be like streamlined further by giving only relevant text this kind of an approach is called as an open book approach because you can plug in your content generation logic you can have different sources etc the architecture says that you can have an llm use vector indices using relevant information and the vector indexes are created by content generation using a specific methodology where we create embeddings of vectors and feed it to the vector indexes coming to the types of rag architectures there are simple and complex rag architectures we will look at a simple rag architecture by using uh, an example of a document search so let's take the same uh, chatbot kind of an interface where i have created a chatbot to go through my local documents so imagine that i have local documents in my computer i have all these in my folders so i created a chatbot which i need to talk to uh, so that i can understand where my documents are or i don't know which document um, my specific data is present in so i have fed all these into the llm using the rag architecture so the local documents got converted into vectors using smaller chunks and they got linked in the vector indexes table now my llm which i'm using is using specific prompts and then it can go and talk to the vector indexes so that it can give me some relevant information so this is an example of how you can create a document search using rag architecture now i'm going to ask this particular to show me what are the cons of the option 2 of project x design so i created a project x and then i have put that into a design document and i'm asking it to give me the cons of the option 2 so unless we have read the document and understood it and consumed it we cannot like return what is the option 2 from that specific document right so what happens during the chunking process is the documents are read and these are converted into smaller meaningful information given into the vector and the vector has linkages between the new vectors which got created with the source data right and using the llm's capability to search and provide information to the caller so we will be leveraging the rag architecture to convert the dynamic information and then that is fed into the llm now when i modify this document the llm should be able to easily use the new updated version because we are constantly looking at these documents and then converting them into vector indices and then feeding that into the database which the llms can leverage at run time now coming to the complex use case of a rag so let's imagine that there is a chat assistant or an ai assistant in the chat support available within a food delivery application so these days you find lot of these already present in the food delivery apps or maybe like cab booking apps etc so let's try envisioning how we can design one for a food delivery application and how complicated it can get into so again i'm going to build the same architecture of the rag the skeleton architecture is basically you have some source of truth we convert them into chunks and then give it into the vector indexes where the embeddings are created now the llm model uses these to streamline them and then fine tune them using prompts and then they are given back to the chat user so as a user i'm going to ask this particular question how long will my order take so now there are two things here one we need to figure out who is this particular user so there needs to be some context aware decisions which needs to be made where we need to identify that particular user and fetch the order id of that particular user so that is one specific task which is like slightly complicated because it's dynamic again uh, an order can vary for different users so we need to fetch that and the other task is we need to identify where is the delivery partner location right now right so we need to identify where is this order so that we can create a final number of how long it's going to take so the user asked how long it's going to take he didn't ask where is the delivery partner but he asked how long the order is going to take so we need to calculate how long it's going to take for the delivery partner to reach from his destination to the destination of the customer so 
we will have to do complex logics there so we will have to understand where that particular delivery partner is present right now before that we will have to pre-compute some information on what is the order id for this particular user so there is some complication required there and the data preparation is key because we need to get these dynamically from some rest endpoints that are exposed within the ecosystem and then we need to fit that back into the rag architecture another possible question which people can ask is where is my order right in that case we need to also get the order status right and we need to identify where the delivery partner is which we already saw so we will have to get both these informations and then we need to fit that back to the user saying that okay your order is uh, right now getting delivered it will take two kilometers or something so and so right so the llms can help in stitching the data and giving it in a reasonable format but to get the data from the dynamic source we need to have the rag architecture so in this case data preparation helps um, in getting these data dynamically and generate embeddings converts these data into meaningful information so that we can make the llm understand what we intend to tell so these are two examples of rag architectures in real world now going to the pros of the rag architecture rag architectures reduce the need for continuously training the llm so we constantly used to trail these llms earlier before this rag architecture we give these data sets again and again we get different samples we get different data set samples and then train these llms to make it better but using rag now we don't have to do that because we are getting dynamic information from the data source rag also reduces the computational and financial cost in training these models continuously because we are retrieving the data instantly like how we get it from a rest api rags can also help diverse models because you can create some generic models which can help us in like pulling some generic information and then just replace that with some meaningful use case specific information so we can create specific and diverse models with rag architecture coming to the cons of the rag architecture so there could be misleading information from the llm itself because if let's say the llm is not equipped for specific needs then it cannot answer those specific information about that particular data because though you give some data specific to it but it may not understand that because it was not trained for a specific purpose so still rag would need to be like fine-tuned but there could be like possibility of misleading information there is no 100 percent foolproof response which will be coming from a rag architecture using the llms because llm itself uh, can be like sometimes misleading coming to the trivia question which i wanted you to ask so which of the following scenarios best represents a use case for a rag so i'll give you four options the first option is generating poetry based on user prompts do you think this can be a use case for a rag or creating a personalized chatbot responses translating text between languages enhancing search results with relevant context so which of this do you think can be a best use case for the rag architecture of course i created this particular trivia using the um, copilot which is based on gpt3 do let me know the answer in the comment section below and we can interact more there to summarize what we just saw in this particular video we saw what is rag rag is retrieval augmented generation using the rag architecture we can leverage the llms to be trained instantly by connecting to external data sources we convert the raw data into chunks these chunks are then converted into vectors we link the source data and the vectors and then store that in the vector indexes llms can now go and read the data from the vector indices and then convert them into a meaningful response which can be given back to the caller there are different types of rags we saw a simple rag using dag using document search we also saw a complex rag using the ai assistant support in a food delivery application we finally also saw the pros and cons of rag architecture if you're creating any ai application using an llm and you want to feed in dynamic data rag is the way to go forward there are different frameworks which are using rag architectures to implement so that you can leverage them we will see that in the subsequent videos as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much